So today we're basically going to be doing a review on Napoli Ever After, which is essentially about a woman who is obsessed with her hair because of um, how she's been raised. It's kind of this journey of how she comes to accept her natural hair and not this like permed relaxed version. I actually really liked it. I think that it had like a really strong meaning behind it and like it was very very relatable everything that she went through. I think it was like an extreme though. Like there was parts where she was doing way too much. 5am to straighten your hair. Absolutely. Waking up to check your hair, check your makeup before your man wakes up. Absolutely not. Uh -uh, for the rest of my life. <laughs> Absolutely not. Never. No, no, that's a never. Oh boy. Listen, if you're sleeping, I'm sleeping. What, <laughs> what difference does it make to you if I wake up looking nice? Because I'm going to shower anyway. Her mum has time. Like, her mum has time. You're coming to my house at 5am to straighten my hair. You're not making stew. You're not making me breakfast. You're coming to straighten my hair. I have Every big day. age. You can't straighten her own hair. If it's that deep, why don't you straighten your hair by yourself? Honestly, I don't get it. And her hair looks silk press, so why do you need to straighten it every day? <laughs> like, it confuses me. You go to sleep, but your hair stays straight. But as soon as one ounce of water touches you, your curls just go. <laughs> it was just like extreme. Yeah, for Very sure. Very extreme. Her friends were enablers. And you know what? I bind and reject such friends in my life. <laughs> what the hell? If it's raining, if there's too much humidity, you can't eat outside. I'll be like, you're eating outside or don't eat at all. Get out. Honestly. And they're like, oh no, don't worry. He's marrying you, not for your hair. But they're like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> BA, will ya? No, you actually, you need to check your friends when they start doing craziness like that. You have to check them and make sure, make sure they're on the right path. You act right. Like, oh. Can't let your friends do too much because that's how that's how they'll get to that stage but she was doing so much for so long and nobody said her. anything yeah that's it and she was just like yeah this is normal for me to act in this way and even to be honest it was actually quite sad like when she because obviously in the beginning she wanted her boyfriend of two years to propose to her and like when she brought up to him the way he was like engaged <laughs> marry you you <laughs> that was me? just like I was like wow you're a time waster honestly you're a time waster in a trash bag and oh. nothing else what are you doing i mean we we knew that though the way he moved on so quick it was like how what the next day literally and then she and then she agreed to marry him that was just so confusing like i was like okay yeah you're trying to throw in plot twists but like that plot twist doesn't make sense like this guy literally shook everything that she was and she was just so ready to marry him after listen i'm tired yeah of tv programs making it seem like marriage is some fairy tale like yeah it, these people they'll be broken up for god knows how long <laughs> someone will just bring them like oh my god will you marry me you'll be like yes why would you say yes if you've been wow. broken up even the way it was going i really thought she was gonna say no not even just because of the other guy right i really thought because they had sex that's it that's all that happened they didn't chat they didn't move on they didn't that's do so anything true. they just had sex and she'll say yes to marriage they had a they had one conversation <laughs> and he proposed with an onion it was just so surprising and, and i thought like, okay she was trying to like pay him back or something I don't know. she was really gonna go through with it and i'm so confused by the guy as well because he was like you're so perfect perfect if you um if you're perfect all the time it's like a first date and then on the day of the um, engagement when you're finally meeting these parents lord knows why you're meeting your spouse's parents for the first time on your wedding day or your engagement day but let's after two whole years i haven't met your parents well, what are we doing that. we live together what are we doing <laughs> They didn't live together. He was squatting in her house. <laughs> the way she was like, yeah, you can get out now. He had nothing to say. He couldn't argue. He's not He's not paying rent. He's not doing oh anything. Oh my gosh. She was basically looking after him. She had to be. Ugh. Garbage. I did really like the way like the sequencing went though. So it was kind of like a journey from her hair and bowl. New growth. New growth. The scene where she um, cut her hair. I think that was the most relatable scene for me because my hair's natural. When I decided that I was going to go natural, I like was falling in love with people's curls, but I was falling in love with the end of the journey. So when I cut my hair, I was going, I was hyped. And then I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what have I done? I really wonder how like white people would view the movie. Or not just white people, like non-black people. I feel like for black girls, your hair is so like, it's such a big part of who you are and what you're like. It's very like, we place a lot of importance on it. But I think that that's something that the movie was trying to highlight as well. Like it was very real. Like even the way that her mum was like so, obsessed with her hair being straight i think 
for everyone it doesn't go to that extent but like when I first went natural my mum was like what are you doing like why why would you choose to do that like over having your hair relaxed and it's like why would I not choose to have my hair the way that God created it to be like there's nothing wrong with people who choose to relax their hair but like I have a right to love my hair like there's nothing weird about me loving the way that my hair grows as much as the concept was good the way they wrote the movie wasn't very good like it wasn't well written at all because i feel like it didn't make sense how the little girl zoe was still hanging out with <laughs> her despite the fact that she and her dad they basically they weren't friends That's they right, weren't okay yeah. like why would he then still allow his little girl to be around her? Yes, yeah, speaking, that's actually true. And even like the first time they hung out, like it's confusing to me because like, if you say that my child's hair is nappy and you're coming for my kid, I just like, it's difficult for me to see how we'll reconcile that relationship. True. And how did she find out where they live? There were a lot of things that didn't make sense to me. When she turned blonde, I thought that was a wig. Yeah. Her hair, her hair was relaxed. Her hair and relaxed, was relaxed, falling out. Falling out in clumps. As in big clumps, not those small strands. I really rate Sonar because she actually cut her hair for this role. And like you could tell when the scene where she cut her hair, like it was her hair, it wasn't no wig. And I think that's so powerful because even I was reading that she said that how it kind of changed her view about her natural hair as well. Because obviously her hair was long and how it kind of like awakened her to that. And I feel like the thing I like the most about the movie is it opens up a lot of conversations, obviously about black hair, but it also opens up a conversation about how we're raising our children type of thing because in the film like her mum's so focused on like the like appeasing to a man and it's like making her the perfect wife why do we still why do we still raise our kids in that way there's i think there's a difference between raising your kid to be self-sufficient and then and be a person of their own and then raising their kids to be desirable another. exactly and desirable by another person which is very very strange we just have so like in this day and age we have so much interest in this idea of like marriage and relationships and it's like what is the use of marriage and relationships if you're not like if you could if you can't be happy by yourself like you should bring yourself enough joy before adding someone else to the mix like that's yeah. simple like she got clean and it was like okay i'm still not happy now even though yeah. this is everything that i thought i wanted everything that i've been raised to want sometimes we have to forget what we've learned and like try something new and relearn new things 100% yeah. I really like that at the end of the film she didn't end up with the other guy the Zoe's dad yeah one thing I did find really weird is that like everyone was looking at her when she had long hair and then as soon as she cut her hair nobody was looking at her if you cut your hair that drastically people will be looking at you like what happened True. if you like what had happened <laughs> so that was weird thank you guys so much for watching um we hope you kind of enjoyed like our take on it, our discussion. If you have anything to add, anything that you think we've missed, please do drop something in the comment. And don't forget to subscribe to Slayed by Dami Affair. And yeah, give the girl a little subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya guys in the next video. See ya guys in the next video. Show me that's how you do it. Do it for them now. They want to hear it.